Channel 5 special, on stage, on 5. An encore presentation. Tonight's special presentation is Morning Call by Ellen Gross. Brought to you live from the Travel Light Theater in the Theater Building by Hanley Dawson. You're important to us. Amico, you expect more from a leader. Northern Trust, the more you want your bank to do, the more you need the Northern. And American Airlines, doing what we do best. Ladies and gentlemen, your host for tonight's program, Mr. Tony Randall. Good evening and welcome. It's really an honor to be here tonight. This, as you know, is a very special occasion. The first of a new series of programs that will bring live Chicago entertainment into your home. I think it's terrific because Chicago has so much to offer, so many talented people, and so much wonderful theater. Of course, Chicago is well known for its downtown theaters that bring major productions to the city. But there's also a wealth of highly professional and creative theaters away from the loop that bring together the talents of Chicago actors, directors, and playwrights. Tonight's play, Morning Call, is an example. It's truly a Chicago effort. The playwright is Chicagoan Alan Gross. Without knowing anyone, with no connections, with no agent, and compromising myself to no man, <laughs> I was able to uh, make a living for the last five or six years in the, uh, in the uh, theater business. I don't think I could say that about any other town. Um, my plays are explorations of the little sections of my life, the observations that I've made. This play is, to me, what I call the end of college. I think that life goes by smoothly until a catalyst appears on the scene. Um, and then suddenly your life is thrown into uh, uh, an imbalance which causes confrontations that you were in you but you never wanted to have. Tonight we have a phone call. Well, what the hell am I doing down here at the library? It's so important I have to be spared, huh? But tell me, I'm not hollering. The actors for tonight's performance of Morning Call are members of Chicago's Steppenwolf Theater Company. Laurie Metcalf plays the part of Joyce Reby, and Jeff Perry plays the part of Greg Bargello. Well, I can understand where uh, my character's coming from, I guess, in the sense that everybody's dealt with a situation where reality barges in on a rather protected or idyllic situation. He's a graduate student in library science, and he gets a call from home and has to deal with something that's more real with digging in dictionaries. I've felt that, and it, it's challenging to play. It's fun to play. The thing, the part of Joyce that I can relate to is the, is the being on the outside of a situation like that when something comes up of uh, wanting to help, being helpless, uh, the strain that's involved on the relationship after that. And uh, that, that's what I can relate to. What are you crying about? Nothing. Oh, Joyce, please. You don't want me to come with you. No. Yeah. You don't want me to come with you to St. Louis. Steppenwolf's artistic director, Gary Sinise, worked closely with the actors throughout the rehearsals. As director, the first thing that uh, we did right was casting Jeff and Laurie. Uh, because of the extreme talent they have, they've made my job twice as easy. Tonight's production is a very special one. Not only does it bring together the talents of the people we've just met and the excitement of live theater, but television allows us to share this with you at home. We'll be back in a moment with Morning Call, presented in cooperation with the Steppenwolf Theater Company. Excuse me, I just noticed that you have a Hanley Dawson Cadillac. Oh, yes. I'm a professional, and I like dealing with other professionals. And Hanley Dawson Cadillac meets your standards? In every way. They gave me a great trade-in allowance, affordable payments, and they still treat me like a valued customer even after the sale. They are professionals. You're important to us. Respectfully, Hanley Dawson Cadillac, 630 North Rush at Ontario. That sure is noisy in here, Mr. Ross. It sure is. I mean, your engine. It knocks. I know. And you're almost there to gas. I know. You should try the Amoco one tank test. One tank test? 
The next time you need a fill-up, get a full tank of Amico Premium Lead-Free. You can't buy a higher-octane lead-free gasoline. Could fix those engine problems yourself. Hey, no more knock. Sure is quiet now, Mr. Ross. The Northern Trust understands what's on your mind. Imagine what college will cost when Karen's ready to go. We better start planning for that. Taxes are taking too much of my income. I need a financial plan. We're getting to be a big company. We may need a bank with more resources. When you have money on your mind, the Northern Trust can help. The more you want your bank to do, the more you need the Northern. If you're going to New York, fly American Airlines. Only American flies nonstop from O'Hare to LaGuardia every hour on the hour. From 7 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock in the evening, every weekday. Giving you hourly service to New York is just one more way we're giving you our best. We're American Airlines, doing what we do best. Doing what we do best. And now, Morning Call with Lori Metcalf and Jeff Perry. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he is. Just a, just a second, please. I'll get him. Oh. It's for you. Who is it? A woman. A woman? I think it's your mother. You're kidding. <laughs> oh, madrone. Yeah, hello. Mama? Oh, come stay. No, 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 I've been up for a long time. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's, uh, uh, I don't know, it's, what time is it? It's 8.15. It's 8.15, Mama. Yeah, well, yeah, 8.15 here, 7.15 where you are. Uh, no, Mama, you, you didn't wake me up. Mama, I was up. <laughs> I am not. What are you talking about? Who? Who? When? What? Oh, no, it was just a student. <laughs> Joyce Reby, Mama, you don't know her. Tell her I'm the cleaning lady. Water, please, baby. Okay. Tell her I'm a private nurse. <laughs> yeah, nothing, Mommy. No, she said nothing. Well, we're having a little conference here. Yes, we get up very early here, we start our conference. <laughs> About library science, what do you think? Tell her I'm a hooker. <laughs> Please tell her. <laughs> what? What attitude? I have no attitude at all, Mom. None. I am not. What are you, Mom? Why are you calling? Yeah, look. I, I, I gotta go to the bathroom. Can you call me back maybe later, maybe tonight? What's wrong? Mr. Ross. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what? what? Mama, what are you crying about? What? What's the matter? I don't know. Wait a second. What Tess? Tess. It's my dad. Yeah. Well, that was spring break, well, right? Is it there? Here, give me. I'll wrap this up. Well, you wait. I'm wearing that. No, no, no. Not to you, Mama. I am paying attention. D damn it, I do listen when you talk. I'm talking to you now. Look, I, I do remember about the test. So... 
Mom, I really, I, I gotta go to the bathroom. Can I put the phone down for one second? What are you crying about now? Damn it, I did not curse at you. I said, damn it. I didn't say damn you. Mama, please. Don't get excited. Well, Joyce, will you please? What? I'm just saying. I know. You let me talk here. You... No, Mama. No. No, there, I'm not talking to someone else. A student is here. We've been through this. Can we get to the point? Well, how serious? How serious? Hey, Chisario. Yeah. So, where is he now? Since when? <laughs> Am I grilling you? I'm asking you. I'm asking in a nice way. No, don't talk to me about my attitude, please. <laughs> no, I can't imagine how you expected this conversation to be, but this is how it is. Mama, please. Look, I'm, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, okay? Let me put the phone down for one second. Greg, be nice. It, it's difficult for me, too. <laughs> okay, I'm, okay, Mama, I'm sorry. Look, do you want me to come home? Is that what you want? Why, what's the matter? Uh-huh. Greg, tell me. Look, Mama, I'm gonna hang up now. Okay, I, I'll call you back before you leave. Mama, what are you, what are you talking about? Spare me, spare me what? What am I, a baby? Come on. Well, what the hell am I doing down here at the library? It's so important I have to be spared, huh? Tell me. I'm, I'm not hollering. I am not. Joyce, am I hollering? Yes, you're hollering. I am not. <laughs> How long are you going? Mama, let me go to the bathroom, get a little bit organized. I'll call you back. Right back. Yeah, goodbye. Greg, tell her how sorry I am. Mama, I told you, her name is Joy. She's a student. Hey, tell her. Just tell her how sorry I am. Oh, she, a, a friend. Uh, Mom, please. She's heard people talk rude to their mother before. She's very worldly. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, you'll have to meet her, but at a better time, okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Mama, just relax till I call you back. Cosi tutti stanno a posti. I just know it. Right back, tell me. Oh, brother. So what? Uh, tell me. Oh, it's hospital test, baby. I don't know. Well, what kind of test? Greg, I'm asking you a question. What kind of test? Are I you can't about? talk about it right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> baby, don't stand in front of the bathroom door like that. I just can't talk right now. Okay. like that first thing in the morning. I had a feeling as soon as that phone rang. Joyce, come on. What? I'm, I'm always afraid it's going to be some kind of a call like that. You know, I can feel it. Oh, you can, huh? Look, don't make jokes with me, Greg, all right? I mean, if you want to lock me out of this, that's one thing. But just don't make jokes with me. What? Lock you out of what? I was in a bathroom. I'm talking about the bathroom. Did you want to get in the bathroom? I said I'm not talking about the bathroom. I was going to the bathroom. I said I'm not talking about the bathroom. Did I say that? Did you hear me say that? Okay. Want some coffee? I'll make it. I can make it. No, I'll make it. You want toast and stuff, too? Toast. Eggs. Do we have eggs? No. So? <laughs> you can get them. White hen's open. I can go get eggs. If you want eggs, I can get you eggs. By the time you're done with your private toilette, I can have eggs on the table. I don't want any. Just toast then. We have bread? Yeah. Right. Just toast then. Good. You know, this has been a lousy morning so far. Oh, really? Well, I wouldn't know. You know, my dad is sick? See, I don't know anything. I just have to figure it all out for myself. Okay, I'm sorry, baby. Do we have any juice? It's in the icebox. I 
bed sick. I gotta go home. I think he needs an operation. Yeah. And that's it? Yeah. Oh, good. <coughs> good what? Well, I don't know what good means. I mean, good that he's having an operation, or oh. good that it's just an operation, or good that he's sick, or what? Here, your toast is ready. Good. <laughs> You're not coming back here. No, no. Once you leave that door, that's it. You're gone. Oh, honest to God, I don't know what's wrong with you this Nothing. morning. Yeah, it's just that whenever anything comes inside here from the outside world, and I don't care what it is, it's phone calls or telegrams, I mean, anything that comes in here from out there, I'm left out of it. You know, I'm not even allowed to read your mail. What, you want to read it? No, I don't. Come on, go get it for you. Just stay where you are. <laughs> when you got invited over to Dr. McKinney's house for dinner, that Joyce, was that was last month. I cried out loud. I'm making a point. What hardly applies to this. Well, see, you're not letting me talk. Okay, talk. Okay. So last month then, Dr. McKinney invites you over to his house for dinner. Well, I just naturally thought... So I run back to the sorority house, I borrow a dress, I'm thinking of having my hair done in a beauty shop, I want you to know, and after all, this is Dr. McKinney, head of the university library, chairman of your department, and a man who once said to me, pardon me, could I get through here, please? <laughs> you're bringing this up now. Greg, it's just because whenever anything has to do with your life, not our life, I'm, I'm not complaining about our life, our life is just fine, it's just that you have this life that's separate. Oh, Greg. Greg, it's, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, whenever anything comes into your life suddenly, it's Joyce who, or no, don't mind Joyce, or she's just a friend, or I don't know what all. I think the coffee's boiling. Well, get it then! All right, okay! <clears throat> Look, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. I, just, I don't want to be left out of the big stuff. That's all. You're probably better off. Well, that's one man's opinion. Mm -hmm. I just like to think that if I'm in, I'm in. Coffee's hot. Is it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't know. You mind if I have a cup, too? No, Joyce, well, I don't mind. you poured yourself a cup. I just stood here watching you make a cup of coffee for your... Well, I, actually, I made the coffee. You just poured yourself a cup. <laughs> One cup. I... What am I? See, the, the invisible woman or something? I gotta pinch myself to make sure I'm still here. George, somewhere. please, honey, I don't want to start this again. You don't, huh? No, I just never understand. You never. You never, ever. That's the problem. You never, ever. Damn it. Damn it. Open the door. No. Joyce, I'm asking you to open this door. You know I hate all this dramatic stuff. Joyce! No! If I break this door down, say help me! Damn it all, Joyce!
Joyce. Oh, Joyce. I have your coffee here, baby. Come on, come out of the bathroom. Your coffee is ready. Cream? What? I take cream in it, you know that. Cream and no sugar. Did you put some cream in the coffee? I... Remember, you take yours black. <laughs> I put cream in mine. I'm the other one. Remember, <laughs> we're two separate people. Our coffee habits reflect that. Yes, I did. I put cream in it. There's no cream in that. I lied. No, <laughs> no I'm sorry. No, don't. don't. <laughs> My car's been acting up lately. The engine knocks, it runs on, so I'm gonna fix it myself in less than three minutes by serving myself with Amico Premium Lead-Free. You can't buy a higher octane lead-free gasoline. It helps stop engine problems like knock and run on. The next time your car's acting up, maybe you can fix it yourself with Amico Premium Lead-Free. It works for me. Nice family. We're worthy of a nice car. That's a Henley Dawson Cadillac. Absolutely. When you've got a family, you need the best price and the best financing available. Well, how do you know that Hanley Dawson is the best? I checked around, so I know. They have a great selection, offered more for my trade-in, and I like their service. It's one nice place to do business. You're important to us. Respectfully, Hanley Dawson Cadillac, 630 North Rush at Ontario. If you're going to New York, fly American Airlines. Only American flies non-stop from O'Hare to LaGuardia every hour on the hour. From 7 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock in the evening every weekday. Giving you hourly service to New York is just one more way we're giving you our best. We're American Airlines, doing what we The Northern Trust understands what's on your mind. If Bill and Charlie and I start our own practice, that's going to take a lot of money. Maybe my checking account should be earning interest. But how do I know that's right for me? We can't delay much longer at the plant. We need capital to retool. When you have money on your mind, the Northern Trust can help. The more you want your bank to do, the more you need the Northern. And now back to tonight's production of Morning Call. <laughs> it's my fault. Oh, no. Here, you have your coffee. Positive. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, positive it sounds so positive. Good, right? I mean, if something is positive, it's good. If it's negative, it's bad, so... Well, I feel negative about a test that's positive, right? This is the power of positive thinking. What are you talking about? <sighs> Maybe I got it all backwards. Maybe she's right. I don't listen when people talk to me. No. No, I don't. I just don't understand what they're saying to me when they're talking no, to me. I think you understand. You do? Told you you'd call her back. Yeah. Did I tell you about Christmas break when my dad and I had that fight? Mm -mm. I was supposed to go help him out at the store. I mean, <laughs> I knew I was. I told him I would. Yeah. But I was out late partying with some guys I went to high school with. Anyway, he wakes me up screaming about how he can't count on me for anything. What a playboy I am. I mean, he's waking everybody else in the house up. Good for nothing, playboys yelling, go ahead, sleep till noon. I don't need you. You got to know, it's like 6 o'clock in the morning with all this going on. So I stagger out of bed, you know, grab a quick shave. I didn't say a thing. He's doing all the talking. Meanwhile, my mom's trying to shut him up, but he's on a rant. 
So I get dressed, I go down to the kitchen. He's got his coat on. No time for breakfast. You slept through it, he says. I didn't say a thing. I just went over to the icebox, I chugged back a carton of orange juice. <laughs> that frosts him for some reason. I think he wanted to punish me, you know? No nourishment or something. Anyway, he grabs the orange juice carton out of my hand. He starts screaming at me about how I live like a pig. I'm, I'm not at school now. I'm un under his roof and all. Well, I, didn't, I didn't say anything. So then he starts on me about how I really don't want to help out at the place. I'd much rather stay at home. I'd much rather play with my friends like the playboy I am. And he grabs me by the arm and he's screaming at me, Is that true? Is that true? <laughs> you know, of course it's true, I tell him. <laughs> I mean, who the hell wants to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go to work? This is my vacation, I tell him. I just finished my final examinations at graduate school. I mean, what do you think that is? You think that is isn't work? You think I'm playing down there? So he sticks out that Mussolini chin of his. He goes and he cracks me across the face. If that's not enough, he rears back like he's going to do it again. Well, that was enough for me. I grabbed him by the coat, this big Frank Nitty coat that he always wears. <laughs> And I turn him around, but he's fighting me. I mean, I can feel it, Joyce. He's trying to punch me out. He's trying to punch me with his fists. So I just, you know, I slammed his ass up against the icebox. And I told him, you are never going to punch me or slap me again as long as you live. I mean, I'm too old for that. See, I'm too big for that. You ever raise a hand to me again, you better raise it to kill me, because if you don't, I'm going to break your face. Then you can point to it and say, my son did this to me. <laughs> My son, the librarian. So, what he said? Nothing. Just looked at my mom and said, this is the thanks I get. <laughs> and went off to work. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please. He's a master of the devastating line. He gets it from watching The Untouchables. <laughs> so I just, you know, I took the next plane out. I came back here. That's why I beat you back for Christmas break. Here, where? You spent Christmas break in this room? Yeah, sort of. Christmas and New Year's? Yeah, I, you know, I read, I laid around. Alone? Of course, alone. Well, I mean, you didn't tell me. What well, didn't come up, Joyce? I'd have told you. <laughs> you know, you, you keep secrets, Greg. You know that. I, I don't think that's good. It's not a secret, baby. I'm telling you now. There's an old expression that says revenge is best when served up cold. Greg, you don't think of this as revenge, do you? I'm sick at spring break. <laughs> Goes in for tests at spring break. So? Well, I'm just saying. Uh, saying what? People don't get sick for revenge. It was so light, baby. I'll never forget that. When I picked him up off the ground, I just picked him up off like, like he was a rag doll. Picked him up off the ground like he's hollow inside. Operator, uh, station to station collect. Anybody from Gregory Bargello? Yeah, uh, 214 Klondike 5 2903. St. Louis, Missouri. Thanks. Hello, Mama. Oh, Aunt Mary? 
Okay. Yeah, take, take the call. Accept it. I'm, I'm sorry, operator. And Mary, this is Greg. Greg. Yeah, yeah, you, you can take the call. Accept it. Okay, good. And Mary, is my mama there? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. How you doing? Oh, really? Yeah, no, I, re I remember you saying that. Yeah, I hope you're feeling better. I don't even know why I asked. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, Maria, me and Mamela, uh, per favore, per l'anno, long distance, eh? Grazie. Mama? What the hell do you let her answer the phone for? <laughs> yeah, of course I asked her how she was. She told me. Listen, Mama? Do you mean... Your papa. Yeah. So when is it? Domani, you're kidding. When? Tomorrow. No, Mama, I was talking to Joyce. I was telling her what you were saying. Tomorrow? Well, yeah, I guess so. I, I, well, I'm not a gypsy, Mama. I got a pack. What do you think? <sighs> Mama, hold on one second. Baby, what's the matter? Nothing. No, Joyce, I want to know. What's the Nothing. matter? Nothing. Well, honey, I could be in and out by the weekend. Yeah, yeah. sure. Oh, for crying out loud. Mama? What are you crying about? Well, I don't know. Sometimes they don't find anything, Ma, and sometimes it's nothing. Who, who said that? How sure? Okay, okay. Mama, don't cry, please. Listen, I'm, I'm on my way. Yeah, today. Well, today in the afternoon. Meanwhile, tomorrow I'll be there. Mama, please. She thinks I'm showing off to my friend, talking rude to my mama. What do you think? <laughs> Could be. Yeah, probably. Listen, mama, so I got one big problem. I don't have the plane fare. Now, it's 76 bucks one way. All I got's a 20. Well, sh sure, I could try to write a check, but the check is no good. If they call the bank... It... Well, it's a small town here, Mama. This is not St. Louis. Yet yeah, I write the check, they, they call the bank, it's one call. Mama, I know the check is no good. I'm standing there like a stupid old. What? No. I don't have it. Mama, I do not have a visa card. You're not born with those things. I have the money. Mama, wait a second. You got it. Where? I have it. Was it my in passbook? In cash? I don't think they take a second party check. Sixty-three dollars. Sixty-three. What are you doing with all that in the house? Just take it. Baby. Okay, mom. I got it. I just got it. That's all. I didn't ask you for it. All right, I'm sorry, I apologize. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'm a little nervous about the whole thing, too. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you think about me for one second through this whole thing, Mom? Just one second. Hey. No, wait a minute, Joy. One second. Okay, look, this is it. I will be in about noon. Yeah, Mama, I'm gonna take a bus to the bus station downtown from the airport. A bus, capiche? I need somebody to pick me up from there. Well, I haven't... Somebody from the store, then. Uncle Joe. No, I can't take a cab. It's 15 bucks. Look, I'll go get your suitcase out of the closet and pack you something. I swear, the next time the phone rings in the morning, I'm not gonna get it. Mama, no cabbie in the world is gonna let me go into a store to supposedly get the fare from my mother. <laughs> I don't see the suitcase. Uh, this is it, Mama. No, I don't mean to give you any more trouble. See, si, tiamo! But if somebody doesn't come get me at the bus station, I'm not coming. Oh, of all the baby things I've ever heard of. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> not, not to you. Ah! <laughs> not to you either. Baby, I'm sorry. She drove Look, me crazy. Just find your own suitcase, okay? Because it's not in there. Honey, it's in the bathroom. I'm sorry. <laughs> just let me... <sighs> Mama, Peppa Bori. Inconvenience, Uncle Joe. Don't be afraid of everybody. It's full of linens. Honey, take them out. 
Miss Mama, how's the business anyway? Uh, uh, Uncle Joe do okay. It's not forever. Mama, listen. When you talk to Pop, you give him my love, huh? Yeah, you, you tell him I'll see him tomorrow. I'll be with him then. It's the important thing, right? Yeah, and, I, and I'll see you tonight. I love you, Mama. You, yeah, you just take care, okay? Ciao. How'd you know the suitcase was in the bathroom? I put it there. When? I don't know, spring break, I guess. And I didn't see it since spring break. I don't know. Didn't you change your sheets since then? I certainly did. I don't know, Joyce. I don't care. What are you bringing it up for? And what are you doing with 63 bucks in the house? Your birthday. 63 bucks for a birthday? You're kidding. No, 50. The other 13 was go to hell money. What? In case I tell you to go to hell one day and walk out of here, I don't want to walk out of here penniless. Oh. Never figured on you walking, though. Maybe I ought to keep the 13 for myself. Joyce, come here. Sit down. <sighs> Honey. Baby, I'm not walking. I know. I just wish I could go with you. <laughs> I, I could sort of pay for my own way. Well, who's going to pay my way then? <laughs> well, is it money? Is it? Look, kids, if it is, I can get more money. That sorority house is full of rich bitches. No, baby. <laughs> it's not the money, then? No. Well, then what is it? Because I've been washing the sheets. I've been taking them down to the laundromat and washing them and putting them right back on the pad there, see? And that's why I didn't know about the suitcase Honey, in, I know, in the bathroom. I know that. Hey. Thank you about that birthday present. Oh. That was sweet. <laughs> well, you you better get back here with my money. I will. <laughs> when? <laughs> baby, will you call Dr. McKinney for me? I oh, can't talk to him now. Craig, Please, I... baby, call him and tell him what happened. I can't talk to him. I hate that man. You don't have to marry him, Joyce. I... Just give him a message. Oh. But you, you call him in a day or two from where you are. Or I will talk to him, but you talk to him, too. Okay. okay. Why? Well, just to have talked to him yourself. Okay, I will. Okay, good. Oh, brother. What? <sighs> My drawing. it. What? I don't have any shirts. Oh, they're at the cleaners. I don't have any cotton shirts. I said they're at the cleaners. Look at this flannel. It's still not there, honey. I'm gonna go to flannel shirts. The shirts are ready. I know they are. You just you go take a shower. My shoes suck. Greg, what? <laughs> Gone crazy. A choice. Look at them. <laughs> Flubbing up shoes. Greg, just buy some more shoes in St. Louis. That's the shoe capital of the world. Don't. <laughs> Don't be winter shoes. Greg, who's looking? At well, he'll look, he'll comment, I know Just it. Just up shoot. go take your shower. You know, it's not a job interview. Don't be winter shoes, flannel shirts. Look at me, I'm going to look like a librarian. Oh, it's a family thing. Families accept the way each other looks. Right. Maybe your family, not my family. Yeah, give me that and I'll fill it in. Family thing. Family thing. You know, you make it sound more funereal than you have to. You know, you can be so mean sometimes. You know that? Go ahead, just pack yourself. I'm leaving. Joyce, honey, wait a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. Sure, honey. Baby, will you help me, please? How many socks? All of them. <laughs> All of them. Well, Greg, if you're going to be back by the weekend, you're not going to need all of them. What'd you say? Nothing. No, I just didn't hear you, that's all. Well, I didn't say anything. Yes, you did. No. I just didn't hear it. That's the I problem. I didn't say anything. Okay, baby. I thought you did. Well, I didn't. Okay? Okay. Joyce, what's the problem? Nothing. Honey, what did I do? What, what? It's because you don't want me to go with you. No. Yes. <laughs>
You don't want me to go with you I, to St. Louis. Did I say that? Did you hear me say that ever? I mean, I'm okay down here, you know, but anything outside, I mean, outside this room means... Baby, the, listen uh, to me. Listen to me. I'll tell you what. Listen. Now... My father still fantasizes that I'm going to marry a girl from Parma. Oh. Par Parma, Joyce. Parma, Italy. I, I don't know anything that came from Parma except my family and the cheese. I mean, are you from Parma, baby? No. Are you from Italy? Are you Catholic even? No, but I thought you said we were... We did, we did. Yeah, I did, and we will. But slow. Okay. Oh. Honey, what am I going to do? The, the man is lying there in a hospital bed. I, I know. I know. Okay. Just give it time, I, okay? Okay. Is it okay? Sure. Are you sure? Yeah. You can go take your shower. He's not coming back. So I'll send you that check when you get to St. Louis. What check? The 63 bucks. The 63 bucks you'll have me. Why? What do you mean, why? I don't want you to be without money. Why? Why do you keep saying why? I'm paying you back, that's all. Okay, well, send it to the sorority house. Why? Because I, I don't like to stay here alone when you're not here. It, Spooks me. That's nuts. What? I said that's nuts. I, maybe. When you come back, I'll come back. Yeah, campus cleaners. Uh, this is uh, Mrs. Bargello. Are my husband's shirts ready? Yeah, it's uh, ticket number 421021. 21, right. Now, are, are they packed in a box? I need, I need them folded in a box. That's what it says on the ticket. Oh, okay, good. Could you bring them up uh, close to the desk? We have to pick them up in a hurry. We're going straight from the uh, cleaners to the airport. Right, straight. That, yeah, that's, that's why I need them folded in a box. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Greg, your shirts are ready. What? I said your shirts are ready. Well, how am I going to get them? Just in the cab. What? what? Greg, just stop the cab and run in. I have the ticket and, and they have the shirts. It's easy. Just leave the cab running. But how am I going to pack them, honey? Greg, they're in a box. Honestly. I'm drawing like a gypsy. I'm like a damn gypsy. Greg, come on. I'm on the damn pack of cardboard boxes. On the phone. What'd you say? I, I'm on the phone. Oh. Well. Yeah, uh, reservations. I need a seat on your very next flight to St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, coach, window, and no smoking. Honey, who are you talking to? to the airlines. Oh, you're giving me the next flight? But that's what I'm trying to do if you <laughs> shut up and let me do it. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Okay. Yeah, direct at 10. And what else? Oh, one stop at 1. How long is that? Oh. Okay, Could, can you hold on for just one more second? Thanks. Greg, it's direct at 10. Uh, what else? One. Yeah, take the 10. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, ma'am, we'll take the 10. Uh, no, it's uh, just one way for now. Yeah, uh, Mr. Gregory Bargello, 8345 Wellington. Bowling Green, Ohio. Wait, on second thought, Joyce, put me on both yes. planes. Right. Okay, baby. Okay. See that way if I miss one, I'm booked yeah, on the right. other. Half hour before. Okay. Uh, bye bye. Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. Did you do it? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> why not? Because I think that's dishonest. That's why. Honey. What? Somebody might need that seat. Ouch. Better hurry anyway. You're on the ten o'clock flight. Uh, am I all packed? Or is... Well, I. You taking any uh, books? No. Well, yeah, maybe the Vonnegut book, but no school books. Oh. Well, then, then you're packed, then. Okay, good. I just got to shave and ready to go. Yeah. Greg? Why 
my notebook. Yes, I'll either be back or I won't. Honey, did you call Dr. McKinney? No. Please do it for me, baby. He's got an 855 class. You can catch him before he leaves the house. Home book. It's, uh, it's under the books on the desk over there. Campus phone book, it says. Yeah. Did you find it? Yeah. said uh, you'd be back or you won't? Greg? Uh, is it Dr. McKinney? Oh, yeah, Dr. McKinney, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello, Dr. McKinney. Um, I'm calling for Greg Bargello in your department. He asked me to call. I'm Joyce Reby. I'm a friend of Greg's. He uh, asked me to call. Greg was called home this morning, yeah, early this morning. Uh, it seems that his father is in the hospital, and he's sick, and uh, he needs an operation, which I, is tomorrow, I think. It, I, I didn't get a chance to hear everything his mother said, but I think that he has cancer, yeah, cancer operation. So... Uh, Yeah, right. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I, I have to go now, Dr. McKinney, but uh, Greg or I, uh, one of us, will be back to you. Yeah, in the next couple of days, one or the other. I will. I promise I will if I see him. Okay. He said he was sorry and uh, don't worry about anything. It's good. I'm sorry too. I know it. I don't, you know, maybe I told him too much, just too many details. No, you did fine. <laughs> you said what had to be said. I mean, somebody had to say it. I can't say it. My mom can't seem to. He's not going to be able to say it, that's for sure. I don't know what to say. I told you, baby, you did fine. No, not to him, McKinney. I, I don't know what to say to you. What do I care about him? I don't know what to say to you. Say anything you want. No, I can't. What do you want to say? Why don't you um, leave this flannel shirt here, see, and just wear a t-shirt to the plane? That would, then when you pick up your shirts on the way, you could take the box with you and uh, change into one on the plane, and then you'd have a fresh summer shirt when you get there. I don't think so. Why not? I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Why not? I don't want to break the seal on the laundry box. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll call the laundry and I'll tell them to take one out of the box and wrap it separate for you, okay? You no, no, baby, it's all right. I got it on, I'll wear it, it's fine. Okay. What about ties, should I? No, I'm, I, I can pack you one, but I don't think you need to wear one. No, don't pack him. He's got tons of ties, I'll wear one of his. What, what do you want to wear one of his for? Well, why not? What do you dial, something tricky, uh, cap gums? Taxi. Oh, well, why I can't wear sneakers? Eh? You can. Well, I'm not going to wear those ugly winter shoes. Don't. Don't, Love it, don't sure. wear those. <laughs> sneakers are leather. It's not like they're canvas tannies or anything. They're honestly out of leather shoes. They look great on you. So do you think? Do you wear them. Yes. Okay, I will. <laughs> a, a cab, please. 8345 Wellington to the airport. Margello? 
bar, G-E-L-L-O, uh, minus 555-3313. Yeah, how long do you... Oh, <laughs> great. Thank you. Long wait, huh? No, honey, he said he'd be right here. What did we decide about the shoes? Where, we... Where are those? Oh, Buy a pair of penny loafers when you get to St. Louis. Shoe capital of the world, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Listen, honey, I'm going to come back as soon as I can, I oh, promise. You'll know where to find me. The sorority house, right? Well, but if it's summer vacation, I've already gone home. No. I'll be back before then. No, I just, what if something happens and you're not? What yeah. if? Nothing's going to happen. You know, Greg, I could go to St. Louis. I could finish at Washington. Washington's a good school. Washington is a fine school, but I'm telling you. Well, I'm, I'm telling you that anything could happen. It just could. Can't you just admit that? All right, yeah, it could happen. I mean, something could happen, yes. If it does, Joyce, I'll call you. We'll talk about it on the phone, okay? I can't think about it now. Don't you understand that? I just cannot think about that kind of stuff right now. All right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Baby, please. Nothing is going to happen. I'm not going to let it. Look, if something happens, if it does, and you got to close the place up, just put as much stuff in the trunk as you can, personal stuff, records and books. Forget about the kitchen stuff. Leave it for the next guy. What about your prints? Great. I hadn't even thought of those. You know, I, I could keep those for you. No, I'll forget about them. Then. But your prints? Well, go to the university, you know, the bookstore or the library office. They both got them. Get one of these big cardboard mailing tubes. Oh. Roll them up in there. Send it to me. Registered mail. But I could still get lost. What? Then have Dr. McKinney hold on to him for Why? me. Why? Huh? I, I said I'd keep him for you. Joyce, there is no need. Will you listen to me? I'm coming back. I... Honey, we're talking about all this because you wanted to talk I about know, it, okay? I know, I know. It's moot. It's theory. That's all. Okay. Yeah. It's just theory, all right? Honey, do you understand what I'm saying? You better hurry. The cab's waiting outside. Okay, get, yeah, get your book. Don't forget your book. Thanks, yeah. Okay. Now, baby, we were just talking, you know? I know. I, I'll, I'll walk downstairs with you. There's no need, honey. I'm just going to get in the cab and go. Well, then I'll, I'll, I'll just walk down and walk back up again. Well, there's no need. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Call me. Huh? Okay, I will. When you get in. All right. From the airport. <laughs> okay, baby. All from right. the airport. <laughs> I better go.
We'll return after these messages. If you're going to New York, fly American Airlines. Only American flies nonstop from O'Hare to LaGuardia every hour on the hour. From 7 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock in the evening every weekday. Giving you hourly service to New York is just one more way we're giving you our best. We're American Airlines, doing what we do best. The Northern Trust understands what's on your mind. My competition sells overseas, and so could I. But how do I handle the financial end? My company has a retirement fund. But will it be enough? Or should I start my own? I'm just not that good at investing my money. There must be someone who can do a better job. When you have money on your mind, the Northern Trust can help. The more you want your bank to do, the more you need the Northern. If you want to save money on engine work, I've got two ways to help you do it. A choice of two Amico lead-free gasolines that can help you fix certain engine problems yourself without paying for engine work. Amico Premium Lead Free helps stop engine knock and run on. You can't buy a higher octane lead free gasoline. And both Amico Lead Free gasolines are weatherproof for year round performance. Engine trouble? Maybe Amico Lead Free gasolines can help you fix it yourself. Isn't that a Hanley Dawson Cadillac? Sure. I'm proud to say it is. Proud? Yes, it reflects on me. That's why I went with the most respected dealer in town. It says I don't settle for less than the best. The best price and the best service. Well, you'd think everyone would go to Hanley Dawson Cadillac. You would, but I'm glad they don't. Why is that? Well, because then I wouldn't stand out in the crowd. Respectfully, Hanley Dawson Cadillac, 630 North Rush at Ontario. It's been a real pleasure to be a part of this wonderful evening. On behalf of everyone at Channel 5, I would like to thank the Steppenwolf Theatre Company, playwright Alan Gross, the Travel Light Theatre in the Theatre Building, the sponsors and everyone who made this production possible. We hope you enjoyed this first On Stage On 5 production and that you will be looking forward to more in the future. I know I will. Good night. Tonight's special on-stage on 5 production of Alan Gross's Morning Call was brought to you live from the Travel Light Theater in the Theater Building by American Airlines, doing what we do best. Northern Trust, the more you want your bank to do, the more you need the Northern. Emico, you expect more from a leader. And Hanley Dawson, you're important to us.